Okay, so at this point, the character is kind of swaying a little bit, and he waves at you, and goes back like that. Um, so right now, the whole body is moving at the same time that the hand is moving. Again, maybe I want like some of the movement to happen at a different point. Well, you have that control wherever you have these keyframes, and in between a tween is what it animates for you. So what if I wanted to do this? What if I selected my starting keyframe of the body and made it happen someplace over here? Again, not even caring about which, uh, which line number. So then the animation would happen at a, at a different point. Now, it's not as easy as that because then, okay, now the body's missing until it starts to appear over here. Uh, so this is that it's all kind of interrelated in terms of I was pretty easily able to move the ending part of the animation to happen at a different place. And even like the, the middle part of the animation, I can change it. But then on the beginning part, well, if I move that, the software says, yeah, there was nothing before that, so there's nothing there. Well, that's not too complicated to fix in terms of what's missing is that the, um, you know, the body's missing, so I can go back and put the body back into, back on frame one. Now, don't do this actually, I'm just kind of showing you here in theory, because you'll have to, you know, you'll have to recreate it, and it might not, might not be in the exact same place, see that it kind of shifted over a little bit. What I'm showing you here is, again, planning. I thought of the idea, let me animate it this way and this way and that way, but then I start to get some of these like little holes or like um, rough around the edges that I'm like, oh, I didn't think about that. And now that I'm trying to fix it, it's a little harder to fix it after the fact than before planning. So that, that could be fixable, of course, with a little effort, but I'm going to undo it. So don't worry about changing when that tween happens. It starts all at the beginning, like that. OK, next. After he waves at you, he's going to reach behind his back and then grab that skull. So that's all happening with the, with the left arm. And we will say that after a little bit of a pause, frame 35, on the forearm, forearm left, F6 on frame 35 of forearm, I want to start a new movement. Nothing happens with that arm until 35. The left arm is not moving, although it is attached to the body, so it moves with the body. That's cool. But nothing will start to happen until 35 with a new keyframe. And uh, let's move this over. Then we'll go over to we're at 35. Let's go to 45. And then add F6, and let's go to 55 and add F6. So here we have again three keyframes, because it's going to start with the left hand down. It's going to then go to the next frame up, and then the next frame back. Question? Yes, I have 35, 45, and 55. Mm -hmm. So the exact numbers don't matter as much, but the idea is that at first it's going to start at a certain point, 35, move up to 45, and then move back to check behind his back, 55 or so. So then that means frame 45, rotate that so that the arm moves out some amount. You can make it go really high up or down here or whatever. It's going to move out. And then it's going to, on frame 55, move back to behind his back. So further, on 55, move the hand a little bit back. So in again, when we get to the advanced part of the class, the CIS 126, we will see about these theories about exaggeration. In real life, if I'm going to grab something from my pocket, I'll just reach into my pocket. Here, I got it. But in animation, you're going to go like this. I'm going to reach in to my pocket. You know, really exaggerated in forms of animation. So that's what's happening right here in terms of he's going to move his hand out like, here's my hand. It's coming out this way. And then I'm going to bring it into the back of my pocket. Well, in between, we need to tween it, classic tween and another classic tween. 
and in between, then it does it for us, reaches out, comes back in. If it's too fast, too slow, I can add frames, I can remove frames. Remember, less frames, faster. More frames, slower. It's kind of opposite, isn't it? You would think, well, more frames, more fast. Less frames, less fast. It's the opposite. Less frames, more fast, because you have to accomplish something in X amount of time. And if you add more frames, there's more time to accomplish it, so it's slower. And there it is there. So if I play what I have so far, He's about to reach back, grab it from his back pocket, and then pull it out and show you. Well, let's go over to frame 60 of the same forearm layer, add a new keyframe so that the, ro the hand can rotate back out. So it's on the hip, it moves out for a moment, it comes back behind the back, it moves out fully out again with a tween in between. Okay, so he puts his hand out, puts it behind his back, and then comes back out. If I wanted a pause, I would add more time in between. Right now it reaches back and then it goes out right away, which is maybe what I want. I know it's a cartoon character, it has that sort of exaggeration. If I want it more realistic, I would add more time. This is the big thing as a beginner, and the more you do it, it's about time. In your mind, you have it playing perfectly. But then when you try to create it in an application, it doesn't behave the same because you didn't account for time if you're if you're missing some or you have some so I, I have a note in the assignment show this to a friend or family show it to someone someone that has never seen it before is gonna see it fresh they're gonna say that's too fast couldn't you slow his hand down well I never thought about that in my mind it plays right but when I show it to someone that's not invested in it they're gonna see these things that you don't so right there I think reaching back is too fast but that's easy to fix. I add more frames, more time. And that's why you'll have only one thing to work on this week to practice as much as you can. Remember, we have lab time. We're going to have lab time after the lecture. We're going to have open lab, 4.30, and then tomorrow as well, and Friday. So there will be the time to work in class if you need it. OK, well, he reached into the um, back pocket to then bring out the, the skull. If you look in the, in the, if you look in the library, there is a symbol that has the character holding the skull, monkey hand skull down. There is a symbol with the hand by itself, and then a symbol with the skull. So what we could do is we can swap out a symbol. When the hand is going behind the back, we can change it so that instead of the hand being empty, it changes to the hand holding something, and it will continue to animate. So the concept here is that you're able to swap out symbols. Like, let's say right now he's got these sneakers, but later I draw like some cool boots. I can replace the sneaker with the new symbol of boots. Just as we're about to replace the empty hand with a hand full of something. Let's go to frame 55 of your hand left. Add an F6 there. Frame 55 on the left hand, F6. 
So we use these keyframes, F6, to do a movement, to set up a classic tween, yes. But again, also when any change happens. The change I want to happen is swapping out from an empty hand to a hand holding something. So select the select the hand on, on the screen there. Be sure you don't select something else on accident. Make sure you're selecting the left hand on frame 55. Then in the properties of the document, switch back from library to document. It's a, you, should, you should say you have an object selected. You have a current movie clip selected. We have an icon, and it says right here, this is an instance of the monkey hand, the empty monkey hand. You have an icon here, swap symbol, the one of this little kind of spinning arrow here. Right there, swap symbol. So that will let you change one symbol to another whenever you want. I want that when the hand goes behind the back, frame 55 or so, change it from empty to holding something. Click on swap, make sure your hand is selected. Click on swap. From the list here, we need we need skull. We've got it in a couple of positions. Uh, when he's bringing it out, it is below his hand, and then when it uh, is fully up, it's going to switch other positions. Right when it's coming down, it's down, and then eventually up. So we have those two things. But for the moment, let's select skull down. And then the cool thing is that it automatically is part of the animation. Again, this is a this is an exaggerated style of cartoon. It's kind of like a Looney Tune style where it's exaggerated. If I'm trying to do something more realistic, I would want you know the hand to fully go back or whatever. Right now, we know that when we drew it, there is like half a frame sort of when you see the skull up here and then it starts to move. But someone looking at it for the first time, they're just seeing the flow of it like this, and it's like yeah, he reached into the back and got it from his pocket. Um, if I wanted to add the more detail, I would have him reaching on the back and his hand shaking like that, trying to get it out, and then takes it out. So there's still plenty more to learn. But again, this when you do your version of this, I don't want you to s stay up all night chugging Red Bulls to get it like perfect. You do have a week. You do have a week or so. And I'm going to be looking at, do you have the requirements of the thing? But if you have this vision that it's got to be like this, you have, you've only got a week. Think about these movies, these famous movies, and even like a week-to-week -week anime that you might watch. There's a whole room of people animating that. So you can watch your, your show week by week or you know binge it in one night. And a Disney movie or a Pixar movie takes years to animate. I think a lot of people bite off more than they can chew in these classes. And I'm not trying to hold back your creativity, but I'm just saying, think about your time. You have probably life and a job, perhaps, and other classes, and you have to do this. Don't try to make a huge epic thing for this assignment. What I'm looking for is that you're able to make a drawing, separate it into pieces, do layer parenting, and do some kinds of movement. We don't need any amazing background at the moment. I would want music. I want it to talk. We're not there yet. So, you know, pace yourself at what we're doing. Um, Right now, he's kind of palming the skull like that, but what I want is that he's actually then, after the hand goes up, he's got the hand upwards. There's a different item there. Um, so the change is going to be, we need another change. The hand is empty up to 55. The hand has now been swapped out to one that is full at 55. Then it automatically animates with the rest of the body to 60. But then by 60, that's when I want it to be rotated up. So we need a new keyframe at 60, F6, frame 60, on the hand. We need to swap that symbol for from it instead of being down to it being up. So select that hand, make sure it's on properties of the object, and then swap to the hand up, or the skull up. And I probably also have to rotate it so that it looks a little correct somewhere there. So as soon as I swapped it, it was like way up there. Also, I'm going to rotate it down here somewhere. 
So now there's been more movement. Let's move from here to here. So between that, so cool for us. It did the rotation, and so the hand is downwards, and now the hand is upwards. So that assumed I had drawn uh, the character a certain way for a certain type of movement, and then it's drawn another way for another movement. It's a separate symbol. And then I can easily swap in between the um, I can swap in between the symbols with a little tweening for me. Then it does it for me. So this is another instance. And okay, maybe that the reveal is too fast. I need more frames, maybe. So you don't have to do this. But if I move this instead of ending on frame sixty, I have it end at frame seventy. Now there's more time that it comes over. So reaching in, pulling it out a little slower. I just randomly picked a value, but uh, that one seemed to be fine. So if you think the, the reveal of the skull is too fast, I've moved my final keyframe on the forearm. It was on 65, I moved it to 70. Was it? No, it was on 60. It was on 60, moved it to 70. Ten more frames. Since this project was already made for us, we didn't select it. But can anyone tell, what is the frame rate of this project? Yeah, 24 frames per second. It's right there. This is 24 FPS. So every 24 frames is one second. I went from 55 to 70. That's 20, that's almost 20 frames, that's 15 frames. Um, I added more frames, I slowed it down. So I slowed it down to, to make it be at a better pace. A moment ago it did what I needed to do, but it was too slow. I mean, too fast. So I added more time. And you're going to see this as you work on it and as you practice with it, what is too fast or what is too slow or what is right. There's still plenty more that I can do, but I'm still learning, and I need the, the lab time and the practice, but this is what I wanted to accomplish at this point in the lecture. We still have more, a little bit more lecture, but if we got to this point, raise your hand if you got your character doing something like that. Raise your hand. Okay, good. Take your hand and pat yourself on the back. You are a character animator. If it didn't quite work at that point, we'll have lab time soon enough, but there's still a little bit more lecture to do. I'm going to move on to something slightly different, but this is what you're going to need to do something like this for your project. This project already came to you ready with a drawing separated into symbols and prepared. Let's do a little lecture where what if I was going to start from scratch? So together we're going to do a very simple animation of a robot. Now your main character from your Drabble might it's probably not a robot. I don't remember anyone mentioning robots. So we're going to draw a robot together and then eventually you're going to animate your own thing. But if you got it to work like me, great, save it, close it. If you didn't get it to work like this just yet, just save it and close it anyway, and then you'll be able to come back to it in a moment. So save this, file save, file close. File save, file close. File new. This is also to remind you that we have to create a project that is slightly different than we've been used to before. Classic tweens don't work with, with uh, HTML5. So we need to change this. Um, Alex, uh, let's save and close that for a moment. And we're starting with a new project, so let's not fall behind on that. Go ahead and save that and close that and let's start a brand new project. Okay, the difference here, there it is, Action Script 3. We're not, if you try to use HTML5, you will not have the ability to link your pieces together. The button will just be off. 
And before you send me an email saying my thing doesn't even work, well, that's you're in the wrong type of file. So besides this, everything's going to be still the same. You create a file. What have been the dimensions we've used oftentimes for HD? HD quality. That one, and it's also in the uh, it's in the instructions. 1920 by 1080, 24 frames. So zooming in here, this is what you'll need to do when you do yours. Eventually, it's advanced. It's Action Script three, and then these dimensions and 24 frames. And then click Create, and let's save it to your flash drive. File Save As. And you can just call this your last name, Practice. So practice. OK, so we're going to draw a robot. Now, we're going to draw a robot that focuses on the concepts to be able to do classic tweening. So if I was going to, to draw a robot, I might start to you know, already draw the hands and legs and all like that. But I have to think about that it's going to what parts are going to move. So I'm going to draw it like this for a moment. Totally simple. It's going to be a square head sort of thing. It's going to be a square body, square hands. Very simple. You don't have to get too fancy at the moment. But we want to draw some sort of robot, something like this. I'm keeping all the pieces separate because then I'll show you in a moment. We need to turn these into symbols. We need to set a variety of things. We need to separate into layers and so forth. We'll do that in a moment. Go ahead and just draw a very simple robot like this. I use the freeform brush tool. You can use like the real shapes if you want. But while you're planning on that, mine's already done. So perhaps just quickly with the with the uh, brush tool, draw a very simple robot like that. So take a moment to draw something very simple. I'm not getting too complex with upper hand, lower hand, and that sort of thing. But you've got like legs and feet, you know, top legs, bottom legs, anything like that. Just kind of keeping it simple. We want to keep the pieces separate for the moment. We'll connect them soon enough. So in general, the idea is we're going to draw the character. We're going to turn the pieces or the portions of the character into symbols. Symbol is the generic term for movie clip or graphic clip or um, sound clip. We have these different ways we can organize our objects. Then after they have been turned into symbols, we need to separate them into layers. And then when they're in layers, we can animate. So that's one of, one of the things that's going to be a problem early on for people as you learn this. You have to remember to have whatever you want to animate needs to be on its own layer. We'll get to that in a moment. But let's say we've drawn the character like this. Now it's what we've got to do is start to select the, the individual pieces. And for me, the, the way I drew it, I kind of find it easier to use the lasso tool instead of trying to make a, a selection with the, you know, with the regular selection tool. If I'm trying to make a selection and then whoops, I also can't really see it, but whoops, I also grabbed a little piece of the hand. When I tried to make a square selection, I grabbed that. So I like to use the lasso tool, which is hidden inside of the polygon tool. If you click and hold a polygon lasso tool, you get lasso. 
And then that way I can make a little selection around, for example, the head. Later when I make a selection of this hand, I won't accidentally grab, I mean when I make a selection of the arm, I won't grab the hand. We'll see that in a moment. But right now, select the head. And F8 on the keyboard, which is also up on the menu. F8 on the keyboard. We'll convert this into a symbol. We needed symbols, remember, when we did motion tweens anyway, so this is not new. But we have convert to symbol. And we have three types of symbols. The one we care about for the assignment so far will be movie clip, the default. And here's where we can name these things to make them easier to find. You can get as complex as you want. They, they called it, what, monkey? Uh, arm L and monkey arm forearm you know they were they were detailed whatever let's just say to make it simple for the moment because I have head I have body I have arms which I will differentiate left and right and legs so this will be head we'll put the registration in the center now eventually I might want the head to shake back and forth so the rotation would be at the bottom here don't worry about selecting the perfect registration here, because out of these nine points, you might not always get the right spot in your actual drawing. So it's sort of like it doesn't quite matter at this point where your registration is. This arm, this hand, I want it to maybe rotate like this. Well, right here is where I want the, reg the rotation but that's not any exact place from there. So again, don't worry about what that is there. Just put it to the center, and you'll be able to fix that on the next steps. So now the head is its own object. I'll select the body. F8 and call that body. body, registration in the center, click OK. Okay, next come the, uh, the hands. This is where, if you wanted like the whole hand to be like one thing that moves, you can make both of those pieces both of those separate pieces into one symbol if you want. If you want the, the hand to be able to rotate as well as the actual, you know, the, the wrist, rot the arm rotate as well as the hand, then you do need separate pieces. I'm going to separate it as much as possible to give you the most, the most possibility. So I'm going to start with this, this hand here, and this is when you decide when I name this, is this the right arm or the left arm? Because when I look at it, it's on the left, so I might call it left arm but it's technically the robot's right arm. So whatever you want to call this, I'm going to call it arm right. You want to keep these names. No spaces. You can use capital, let me zoom in here, you can use capitalization to differentiate the words. You should avoid spaces. Arm right. Call it right arm, that makes sense as well, but this is an arm and specifically the right one. And then we have in a moment arm right hand. Okay, the hand. When we start looking at these in the library, they will be alphabetical. So I could call it right arm, right hand. And they'll be grouped together alphabetically. I could call it arm right, and then arm right hand, and that's another way to group the pieces together. So how I would do it, personally for me, this is the way I think, 